what's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're gonna talk about becoming a junior SOC analyst or junior security analyst we will talk about the roles and responsibilities what you need to have also we'll talk about the SOC roles and at the very end we will take a small simulation where we will go over a simple brief on what you will expect to do on your daily life this is taken from a new room released by Troy Hackme, Junior Security Analyst. And if you expand the very last task, there is a simulation here. If you click on the view side, this is what you also do here to demonstrate uh, brief parts of your daily tasks. All right, let's jump back now to the board here and start with the roles and responsibilities. So at the very first, what you will do as a Junior SOC Analyst. As you can see, the very first thing is monitoring and investigating the alerts. That's the very important part or the core part of a junior SOC analyst. So basically we'll go over the logs from all of the various sources, such as you can say firewall logs, um, web server logs. You can also go over um, whatever, SSH logs and IPS logs. Now, normally in a SOC environment, all of these logs are all aggregated in a central place. We call it SIEM. So basically, you will look into the SIEM logs. In there, you will all the logs of the firewall, web server, SSH, IPS, all of the business assets, meaning that the computers, endpoints, the servers, all of the logs will be aggregated in the, into the SIEM. An example of SIEM is Splunk. One example of an SIEM solution in which you will spend most of your time going over the alerts and investigating them. So that's the very first part of your job. Next, configure and manage security tools. So basically, once you go over the alerts, now technically when you go over the alerts, you will Categorize them based on four categories. You will have low priority and you will have medium. All right. And you will have high. And lastly, you will have critical. So basically, these are the four categories of the alerts. So when you spend your time looking at the logs, you will be triaging the logs based on these four priorities. So if an event or alert is critical, you will assign it a critical priority and you will start investigating the alert to, to see whether what happened actually, how it happened, when it happened. So to see how it happened, okay, when it happened, all right, and what happened exactly. These three questions you will raise when you investigate uh, an alert such as the critical one so we will go in this order critical high medium and then low so based on your investigation you may need to escalate the ticket um, to a higher or a more senior person in the SOC analyst such as the instant responder instant responder is a more senior person in the SOC uh, team who will conduct deeper investigation. We'll come into that later, but that's the process of investigating alerts. In, in light of investigating alerts, or based on the results of investigating alerts, you may need to configure some security tools in order to detect or automate certain repetitive tasks. Now, the third part of your job is developing and implementing basic IDS signatures. Oops, let's remove this one. Yeah, so you will implement IDS signatures right you will go over the current signatures update database make sure that all of the ids ips are configured with the security settings to prevent further attacks participate in SOC working groups meetings for example you may at the end of an attack you may conduct a meeting with your SOC team or with your SOC team to investigate to uh, discuss what happened and put out all of the lessons that it's called lessons learned that you may need to uh, put in place to prevent the attack from happening in the future. And lastly, create 
tickets and escalate the security incidents to the tier two and team lead if, if needed. We talked about this when we uh, talked about the first part, monitoring and investigating the alerts. So we will work with the alerts, with the logs, assigning them uh, priorities and escalating them as possible. Now before talking about the SOC rules, let's talk about what you need to have in order to become a junior or to work as a junior security analyst. The very first thing, as you can see, you don't need to have massive experience in the SOC field. It's only good if you have uh, zero to two years of experience with security operations basics. Now, if you don't have experience with, SOC, with the SOC's environment, you may uh, actually, it's okay to have some sysadmin experience. So if you were a previous system admin or IT specialist, and you have experience such as five years of experience in IT, um, coupled with some certifications, you may be able to get into uh, a SOC team without any experience in the SOC uh, environment. The next one is understanding of networking, operating systems, and applications. An example of networking is understanding the OZ model. So the OZ model is important to understand. Also the TCP IP model, TCP IP model. Um, operating systems, Linux, Windows. In some organizations, you may need to know uh, Mac as well, right? And web applications, how the internet works, how uh, Apache and NGINX web server works. Lastly, it's preferable to have a certification. Oh, actually, I jumped to the last one. We just have first the programming part. So the programming part, it's preferable if you know how to uh, perform or you know create scripting uh, scripts in programming languages such as Python, Bash, or Ruby. It's very important for repetitive tasks. And lastly, the certifications part. Now the certifications part, there are a couple certifications you may seek actually to enhance your opportunities to become a SOC analyst. First thing is CompTIA Security Plus. It's the basics and backbone of all the security certifications for those who want to get into the field. And Cisco CCNI Cyber Ops, it's more tailored toward those who want to get into um, uh, SOC teams. CompTIA Cyber Security Analyst, it is similar to uh, Cyber Ops, but the vendor is different. It's from CompTIA. This one is from Cisco. It, Cisco CCNI Cyber Ops focuses much on Cisco products using Cisco products to respond to incidents, while CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst focuses more on the general uh, aspect of the SOC environment. So which one I prefer? Of course, if you are new to the field, first get the CompTIA Security Plus. Then if you have the budget, you can go with CCNS CyberOps or CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst, coupled with system, some uh, experience in system admin or um, brief experience, one year, two years in security operations basics, you can start your uh, journey as a junior security operations analyst. All right, now let's talk about the SOC rules. The very first, it's you, the junior SOC analyst, or we call it the tier two, the tier one, sorry. So you will monitor the network traffic as we talked about, the logs, the events. You will work also on tickets to close the alerts. So for example, Say you are investigating logs from the SIM here and you found an alert that qualifies to be high, right? So it classified the alert as being high in priority. So we'll create a ticket and work on the alert, investigate how, when, and what happened. That's what we mean by saying create tickets. Perform also basic investigations and mitigations. If you were able to close the alert yourself, you will just close the alert um, and then perform the mitigations on the host that was compromised, or you would configure the firewall, the IPS with the signatures in order to prevent the attack from happening again. Very part, very important part of your job is gathering something called the IOCs, the indicators of compromise. So when you conduct an investigation after you spotted an alert, you will gather IOCs such as IPs, hashes, um, domains, after an attack, you will gather these IOCs and feed them into your uh, firewall or IPS to block them entirely. All right, now the next one is 
incident responder tier two we call it the tier two this guy actually focuses on deeper investigations analysis and remediation so basically say you have discovered an alert you raise an alert as critical all right and you saw that this alert needs to be handled by a more senior person in the SOC team so you will create a ticket and escalate it to the incident responder on tier two they will conduct deeper they will dig deep into the investigation conduct deeper analysis and suggest remediations these guys also work in threat hunting they will also uh, hunt for th uh, threats uh, and study their TTPs. We talked about TTPs previously in previous videos, tactics, techniques, and procedures to understand the attackers and their motivations, their tools, and their techniques. Um, also, the incident responder responsible for um, resolving more complex alerts that you raise to them from your investigation. The last one is the threat hunter, or we call it the tier three. This guy also works on more advanced investigation. They receive also the alerts from tier two. In case the tier two uh, personnel wasn't able or saw that the alert needed to be escalated to a more advanced role, they will escalate the alert to the threat hunter who will work on more advanced investigations. Um, threat hunter also will perform threat hunting as well to study the attackers and their tools. And one last part of threat hunting is actually doing malware reversing. So a threat hunter will do malware reversing in case, say that you have discovered an alert uh, about an infiltration infiltration on the network. You escalated the event to the tier two responder, right? Or incident responder. Incident responder found a malicious executable that needs to be reversed. They will send the executable to the threat hunter who will do malware reversing. So that's in brief how it works. Um, also, one very important part of Junior Security Operations Center analyst job is to follow the news all the time, follow the latest threats, right? Understand the TTPs hunting for threats, and also uh, being up to date with the APT groups, Advanced Persistent Threat Groups. That's very important and necessary to configure your firewall, your uh, IPS with. Um, alerts and signatures to prevent these attacks from happening all right now we talked about we talked briefly about this let's now take a small simulation where we will go over what a junior security analyst would do in their daily life so let's start the simulation here so a day in the life of a junior security analyst so as you can see here this is a window laying down the alerts um, you see here, this is actually um, a demo window. This is not real window you will see, of course, depending on your SIM solution you are working on. But let's say you have this window in your face where you have these alerts. So it's preferable all the time to inspect the alerts um, using ascending order. So this one is descending, as you can see. I prefer to investigate ascending to understand how the attack, how, when, and how the attacks happen. For example, this is an alert. Let's, let's, let's see here. Log on failure, specified accounts, user password expired. So someone tried to log in, right? But their login attempt was failed, uh, not successful because the password has expired. Fine, next one. Multiple failed login attempts from John. So basically here, when you see multiple failed login attempts, you have to investigate further to understand and determine whether this is someone uh, actually trying to log in or brute forcing the password, or could be someone from the organization trying to log in and, uh, it ha and it happened they forgot their password. Next alert, the user John logged in successfully. And you see an authorized connection attempt detected from IP address. So basically, your SIM solution here detected that a successful login attempt was recorded and caught from an unknown IP address. This one actually raises a suspicion, which means you need to uh, raise an alert on this one. So you click on that, you raise an alert. Now, next one, you have to conduct the investigation. You start the investigation by of course, in our case here, in this scenario, you will grab this IP address to see where it came from. 
So we will use an IP scanner to scan the reputation of this IP address. So you take the IP address from here and you scan it, perform a reputation scan on this IP and you found it is malicious. Now basically in real life how you do that there is a website called abuse IPDB. In here you will check on uh, the IP address in suspicion. For example if we check on this one and you can see the IP was found in the database of the website and it is flagged as malicious. So it belongs to China Mobile Communications Corporation, the domain name China Mobile LTD, it's from China, so it is malicious. Now, once you find this, your suspicions are confirmed that this SSH login was not from the organization. So you proceed further and conduct further investigation on that. Next, now based on the investigation, you will see that you need to escalate this alert to a more senior uh, team member in the SOC environment. Of course, you won't escalate this to the sales executive or security consultant. You will escalate this to the responsible person. It happens to be from the list here, the team SOC team lead. You just investigate that and choose staff member. Now, after that, the senior or the instant responder say they conducted deeper investigations and they found that the alert you raised was actually uh, malicious and they sent you a list of the IP addresses to block on the firewall. So one of the IP addresses you need to block is actually the IP address that originated the connection. So you take it and you go to the firewall, block it, add it to the block list and your investigation is done. Of course, that's a very small brief simulation. In real life, it is bigger and it is deeper. So I hope you guys in enjoyed this video. And I recommend you taking this room if you are just getting into uh, getting to know what is the SOC and what is the junior SOC analyst, how to become one. So that was for today's. I hope you enjoyed that and see you in the next video.